So Israel confirms its troops have taken control of part of the Rafah border now, crossing right into southern Gaza. As of this moment, the IDF says it's killed about 20 people, calling them terrorists in the area. Israel calling this a counter-offensive operation, counter-terrorism operation rather, that may be a prelude to a larger ground incursion into the area that's sheltering more than a million displaced Palestinians. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that a ground invasion of Rafah must happen in order to bring home hostages and get rid of Hamas. Well, the troop movement came right after Hamas had accepted a ceasefire proposal from Egypt and Qatar, a proposal that Israel now refuses, saying that it isn't what they talked about previously. Our Marcus Moore is in Tel Aviv, along with our national security analyst, Mick Mulroy. So, Marcus, the, the White House now says that Israel's operation in southern Gaza is, is not uh, what Biden had actually warned against. So what exactly is going on with this operation in Rafah? Well, one of the things, uh, Kira, that we know and, and from the very beginning of this operation was uh, it seemed pretty clear that this was not going to be a massive, uh, all-encompassing ground operation focusing on the entire city of Rafa. And, and really the main signals for that were the fact that less than 24 hours before the operation started, you'll recall, Israel delivered or, or dropped flyers uh, in the eastern part of the city urging 100,000 people to, to evacuate uh, the eastern part of the city. And so that in and of itself gives you a sense of uh, what Israel was trying to say, that this is a, a limited um, operation in its scope and that it's a precise operation. What everyone outside of Israel, uh, a number of countries and aid groups have been worried about uh, is what a larger operation would look like, not only in terms of the devastation that it would cause, but of course the more than a million Palestinians who have gone to Rafa, uh, where would they go? So uh, when we talk about the differences um, in the operations, that is th that's what we are, are looking at and that is what we have seen, Kira, and that operation continues as we speak. So, Mick, Israel's defense minister vowing to continue the operation in Rafah until the hostages are returned. Let's just talk about how this could impact any potential ceasefire deal. And does this fly in the face of what President Biden asked Israel not to do? So, Kira, obviously we had some false hope uh, yesterday when Hamas was saying they accepted an agreement, but they didn't accept the agreement that Israel offered. And I think that was the confusion. Right now, we can clearly see that the United States would like to see a limited operation, intelligence and reconnaissance driven, that finds the enemy, in this case, four battalions of Hamas militants, and then focuses the mass effort on them. Vice, essentially, a mass effort where they go street by street, which could cause significant damage and civilian casualties. Right now, we see this, uh, I, I think, early preparatory action by Israel does not necessarily indicate which direction they're going to go. They probably are trying to seal off uh, militants escaping into Egypt and, of course, other uh, munitions uh, coming in. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Whether this will be a full attack or a limited attack is yet to be seen. So, Mick, one more. Three U.S. officials now telling ABC News that the U.S. is actually going to pause deliveries of ammunition to Israel. Uh, what more do you know about that? Is that a good strategy? Uh, so it, it has to do with how the munitions is used. Obviously, there is a significant threat of Iran. They wouldn't want to uh, stop the munitions uh, and weapon systems that are used to defend Israel. But the question is, uh, essentially, the large uh, diameter bombs, the 2,000-pound JDAMs, those are the specific weapons uh, that we are hearing are being paused because they cause so much destruction when used in urban areas, generally something we would not do. I think that is where the, the issue lies. I don't think they'll cut off all supplies of weapons and munitions for use in Gaza, but the specific ones that I think the U.S. government finds problematic, and that is the large diameter bombs and the ground penetrating munitions, which are effective on tunnels, but can cause significant destruction to the buildings uh, around where the point of impact is. All right, Marcus, more in Israel for us, and also Mick Moore, I appreciate it.